美术。Oh Allah, benefit me with what you taught me, and teach me what will benefit me, and provide me with beneficial knowledge. Amen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome to the first in a series of Arabic tutorials brought to you by Maysour in conjunction with Al Medina students. These videos have been inspired by the Medina book series, and they're really for those students, and they're really for those students who have basic Arabic reading and writing skills. I'll be referring back to the grammar rules that can be found in Medina Book One. So let's begin. The first question you should ask yourself is, "What should I know by the end of this lesson?" The first thing you should know by the end of this lesson is, number one, the two different types of sentences in Arabic. Number two, the definition of a noun in Arabic. And number three, the difference between a definite. And indefinite noun. In Arabic, there are two types of sentences. Number one, a nominal sentence pronounced jumla tun ismiyatun, and number two, a verbal sentence pronounced jumla tun fi'liyatun. A nominal sentence is simply a sentence that begins with a noun. As for a verbal sentence, jumla tun fi'liyatun, it's a sentence that begins with a verb. So if a nominal sentence is a sentence that begins with a noun, the next question we have to ask ourselves is, what is a noun in Arabic? A noun in Arabic can be the name of a person. For example. Muhammad, Zaid, Maryam. It could be the name of a place, for example, London, America, or Saudi Arabia. It could also be the name of a thing. For example, a pen, a book, a mosque, etc. It's important to note that Arab grammarians consider pronouns. For example, he, pronounced, huwa. She pronounced here. They pronounced hum or hunna. Hum, if you're referring to three or more men. Hunna, if you're referring to three or more women. You pronounced anta. Or anti. Anta is for singular masculine. Anti is for singular feminine. We pronounced nahnu and I. Pronounced ana as nouns. In Arabic, we also have a pronoun. If we want to refer to two people specifically, be it two men or two women, or one man and one woman, and it's referred to as huma. Arab grammarians also consider adjectives such as big, far. Ugly, pretty, and beautiful as nouns. Nakiratun is used to describe a noun.
that is indefinite. For example, if we wanted to say a house, it is pronounced Beitun. If we wanted to say a pen, it is pronounced Qalamun. If we wanted to say a book, it is pronounced Kitabun. Now, the un sound at the end of the word is known as tanween and renders the word indefinite. It corresponds to the English indefinite article a or an. Ma'rifatun is used to describe a noun that is definite. So if we wanted to make any of the previous nouns ma'rifa definite, we simply add al in front of the words and remove the tanween, leaving only one dhamma. For example, al plus baytun becomes al baytu. Al plus masjidun becomes al masjidu. And al plus kitabun becomes al kitabu. You can see that once al entered upon a noun that was indefinite, nakira, with tanween, the noun then became Ma'rifa, definite, and the tanween has been dropped, leaving only one dhamma. Although some masculine names have tanween, they are not nakira, indefinite, but rather they're ma'rifa, definite. For example, we say Muhammadun, but we do not translate this word as a Muhammad. We just say Muhammad and it would be incorrect to say Al Muhammadu. Likewise, we say Zaydun and it would be incorrect to translate this name as A Zayd. We just say Zayd. Similarly, we do not say as Zaydu. And finally, we say Bilalun, but we do not translate this word as a Bilal, we just say Bilal, and it would be incorrect to say Al Bilalu. So we don't say the Muhammad, and we don't say the Zayd, and we don't say the Bilal. In summary, in today's lesson, we've covered the different types of sentences in Arabic. We also looked at the definition of a noun in Arabic. And finally, we discussed the difference between a definite and indefinite noun. I hope you enjoyed and more importantly, benefited from today's lesson. And I ask Allah Ta'ala that he accepts this small effort from me and from you. Wa jazakumullahu khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.